um, this library is not really changing narrative along with collaborating with organizations such as I and others. But anyway, I'm going to go right into the program. Here's some historical aspects of what we're doing today. Many years ago, 16th Street Baptist Church was surrounded by a segregated, predominantly black neighborhood. There were houses up and down 6th Avenue North that were predominantly black businesses too. However, several were owned by aging guests. On 5th Avenue, you could find the Slater School. Construction of the school was supported by the New York-based John F. Slater Fund for the Education of Freedom. And the school was named in honor of the New York-based John F. Slater. The H-shaped wood frame building was two stories tall with 10 classrooms, tall, triple hung windows on three sides of each classroom that were protected by small wooden awnings. And in 1898, Birmingham City School Superintendent John Phillips approved the creation of a lending library in the Slater School using funds raised by black educators to acquire reading and other resources for their use. The Slater School Library was precursor of the city's first public library for black residents, which opened, as I just spoke of, as Booker T. Washington Library, which is located, which was located at the Masonic Temple, which is currently still operating as of today. How many know what Booker T. Um, Masonic Temple is? Younger people, I encourage you to take a trip to the Masonic Temple downtown. The move to the expanded Slater School Library into a public library was endorsed by Tuskegee Institute, founded Booker T. Washington in 1913. More than 4,000 collected from individual donations and fundraising concerts by special school groups was turned over to the Birmingham Public Library Board in 1917. A storefront at 1713, 17 through 1715 on 3rd Avenue North, which was leased for $55 per month. And Maddie Hurd was given training and leadership in Louisville and is employed as a library assistant at $35 per month to supervise this library. Within a few months, the Birmingham Public Library Board decided that a male library would better serve the branch. Director Carl Milley hired the untrained original gangs at $75 per month. With six months, he was criticized for his failure to develop as a professional and for allowing a white person to use the branch. Erlene Driver replaced him in 1921. However, in 1924, the library moved into grounds floor space in the newly opened colored Masonic Temple building at 1634 Avenue North. The facility expanded into an adjoining one-story commercial space in 1927, and then two additional rooms on the opposite side of the building entrance in 1933. In 1956, the library's collection was moved to the newly built Smithville Library on 8th Avenue West, which was the first structure built for specific person housing for a library for African Americans. However, in this story, that's just a brief issue, but one of the things that I need to inform you guys, when creating an African-American library, there still was not adequate funds. The library received donations from other libraries to create that library. However, we have transitioned into a better um, financial state, but we still have a long way to go. But that is just the historical beginnings of the African-American Historical Library. You're at the second one, and we're still going to need financial to take this one to the next level. Because when you go to your other areas, you see the masculine, the, the, the just enormous size, not only of the buildings, but the programs and the financial budget. But it takes people that look like you and I to get that established and to get that done. And I know I went on strip right there. But, <laughs> but again, this is how we create the atmosphere for our community. Thank you.
1855 Western Olin High School student Eddie Kendrick, Paul William Hill Osborne, and Willie Wallace formed a duo group called the Cavalier Cavaliers and began performing around Birmingham after high school. Kendrick, William, and Osborne continued doing music as a trio. They eventually moved to Detroit and became the became known as the Prime. So Osborne left to become a solo artist. Kendrick and William went on a on to perform to on to form the Temptations with fellow Alabama native Melvin Franklin, Otis Williams, and David Ruffin, Dennis F. Edward, Arthur, another Alabama, uh, another Alabamian, would later join the group. Nat King Cole was assaulted during a concert on April 10, 1956, in Birmingham, Alabama. While singing the song with the girl, three men ran down the aisle of Bartman, about where Art Story first called. Local law enforcement, enforcement would quickly end the invasion of the state, of the state, but not until the call was topped off from his piano bench and received a slightly injured to his back. He did not finish the concert. Police later found rifles, a black jacket, and brass knuckles in the car. Outside the venue, a fourth member of the group was later arrested. All were tried to convict. It was later discovered that the original plan to attack Cole and kill 150 members of the clan. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna bring up two gentlemen, um, Patrick Johnson and Marcus Pritchett. These two have a big part in the Birmingham music scene. It's a, just a really the whole thing about artists. So we'll bring up these two fellas and we're going to have a little kind of discussion. Hello. How y'all doing? Hey. Um, all right. Hey, no problem with you. Uh, you know, talk about, you know, you brought it up uh, and how the music scene and everything. Well, arts is really growing up in the 80s and the 90s. Mm. Um, Funny thing is, I went to school around the corner. I went, to, I went to uh, elementary school at uh, Alley of Fatal. Uh, if I know what uh, the school did, also, uh, what was it, six first, first after something like that. Um, so all of my rappers actually started there, and we would actually come to. We was trying to battle some of the, some of the dudes at, at Washington uh, at the time. With, uh, so there was always a little little elementary school rival there. But uh, just the arts in general, I, I think I've always been. I've always been a band nerd, right? I've always been a music nerd. My dad was heavily into music and whatnot. So that was always like a part of it. Uh, I played trombone in the band from elementary to high school. I was trying to get uh, uh, music scholarships and whatnot. One I got and I and I didn't I didn't take advantage of it. Uh, but that was a whole that's a whole other story with that. But the group that I'm that I'm closely associated with, uh, that everybody knows me from is called the Red Light District. And uh, we're like uh, basically our journey as a group started in maybe like in 1994 um, on the campus of UAB. Uh, used to be a bookstore called Snoozy down in the uh, old Hill Center, and we were we were selling tapes out of that out of that bookstore with that. So everything that we did dealing with rap music and whatnot kind of exposed us to a whole lot of different ideas, a whole lot of different. Uh, 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 ways to go about things. This brother right here, Marcus Pritchard, hosted, and I and I know I know you're gonna get into it. But he was I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna tell him what else. He was responsible for creating the space, one of the spaces that we had uh, at the time to kind of come through and showcase and so on and so forth. Him creating that space opened us up to to listen to and see and be associated with a lot of different types of artists, not just rap artists, not just hip hop artists or whatnot. Um, for me, fast fast forward and again. Um, when real life, real life is at some point in time, right? So this, these, these are these these years I'm talking about. I'm not married. I don't even think I got a girlfriend. 
uh, I ain't got no kids or nothing like that. When real life happens, I got in in a matter of two to three years, I got married, had two kids, and bought a house. Right. Um, so that's what I mean by real life happens. When that happens, priorities change. Right. And so for me, making my foray into into the different arts areas and whatnot started with me being like, okay, well, I only have a limited amount of time, right? I used to be gone all the time. I used to be traveling back and forth and so on and so forth. Situation is different now. So if I leave, because it's my love, I'm still going to leave. But if I leave, it's got to be for something. It's got to be about something. It's got to be worth something. Um, and so I started just choosing what there was differently. Um, Red Light, we came up in, in, in the poetry scene. There was no hip hop scene. There was no place yeah. for hip hop art. There was a hip hop scene, but there was no place for hip hop art at that time. So us coming up in in, in, in the poetry scene opened me up to to that side, right? And so as I get into these new positions, new opportunities come up or whatnot, I'm able to pull from a lot of different places, right? One 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 key event I say in my life, in like maybe 2008, I got a chance to. Uh, uh, create original music and score a film for uh, Alabama Public Television, the PBS affiliate here. Uh, it was called Mr. Dow Had Something to Say. It's about a, uh, uh, a black artist, uh, untrained artist, I would say, because that's mainly the plot, right? And he's from Bessemer, Alabama. He's probably, probably passed away maybe 10 years ago, maybe less than that or whatnot. Uh, but being able to work on that documentary Knowing what they were going to be talking about, we're talking about visual art. We're talking. I'm trying to tell a story of an artist or whatnot. So I'm trying to use all the tools available to me, all the people I know, every every genre, every everything, right? So I I pulled. I was fortunate enough to be able to pull some some members from my group to work on for real life, and we worked on some things. Uh, I I formed associations with some of the singers that were on the scene at the time, and we worked on some stuff too. Uh, and I ran back and I grabbed a couple of poets that one one in particular that I had been dying to meet had not met yet, uh, John Paul Taylor, uh, over real life poet. Yeah, yeah, we love JP. Um, but that's how I met JP, and uh, JP is probably probably my closest friend to this to this day. You know what I mean? So. Uh, matter of fact, I'd be forgetting that that's how I even know you <laughs> to begin with. JP introduced me to uh, Demar. Um, but no, no, just just hip hop is one thing. But if you if you got an open mind, and you can, and you don't look at hip hop as just as one thing. You look at it as a form of creation, right? Uh, an actual art form, and, you, and you're able to pull from different different experiences and, and so on and so forth to create that. Then you all you automatically be open to it and be able to kind of flow within it. So that's my take. Uh, Mark, what's the arts like? Yeah. First of all, hey, thank y'all for taking y'all time to come out here, chop it up with us. For sure. You know what I'm saying? I see the brothers back there. I see the young men. Thank y'all, ladies. Thank you for having us at this library. Uh, I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna take you back because he, he highlighted a couple of things, couple of holes in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we the venue that I was part of was called the Last Sunday Showcase. And that was not um, that was not my idea. That was my friend of mine named Bimo Brian Moore, who was uh, the first person I know to print his own magazine. I mean, there was other people who did it, but Bimo did it. He uh, printed his own tees. Uh, you know, um, there's a guy by the name of uh, DJ Supreme. He had the orgasm first, and when the orgasm was here, we was all over at this place called the High Note on the South Side. A venue like that didn't. Exist anymore? Where we could go and you know just do what you know do what we did. But yeah, do, yeah, do. oh, okay, yeah. Cause I showed I showed you to know. It's some, it's some, it's some. Okay. okay, but my whole furry into getting into any of this when I was coming up, uh, hip hop was what it was. You know, it was something that I, everybody tried to do. Me, all my cousins, all my classmates, some of us just got a little bit better than than others, so we pursued it a little further. Uh, Birmingham didn't have no record labels of no. So uh, I was like, well, you know, I didn't, I skipped the whole demo stage and he said he was at Snoozes. I was selling mine about the trunk of my little escort. We go to uh, George Ward Park and pull up over there. Uh, it was a big scene back in the day, George Ward Park. We didn't have that idiot shit where we had to break and run if anything happened. You know, we threw a few festivals, but we all live to stand here and tell it to you. But we would uh, go over there and I started doing it because I have been making money since I was eight years old. 
and I done sold everything up under the uh, sun. I mean, I'm talking about Jordan's jersey, music, videos. Comedy. You know what I'm saying? I, it, well, I always been silly since I was a kid. That's a whole other thing. But um, you know, so we was we was doing it, and I just kept doing it because a I was getting money from it. You know, I mean, I'm talking about I'm at this point like with 17 years old. I had did the nine to five thing, and again, I always was, you know, selling things, but selling the music, and that was that was extra uh, 500 600 dollars, you know, just selling my records out of the book. But I like having the word executive producer Mark Pritchard on the back of my projects. You know, uh, I like the little notoriety that came with it. You know, we uh, started getting in uh, magazines uh, or whatnot. We was uh, me and my group, uh, which was a uh, these guys was on the radio. We wasn't blessed enough to get on the radio and whatnot. We wasn't blessed enough. Uh, but we did get in uh, magazines using rap pages and um, rap sheet, and the source will add about that big. But anyway, we was doing that. And again, I, I went to every music uh, conference that they ever had. I'm talking new music seminar, Jack the Rapper. Uh, everything that uh, we gathered at Freaknik, every the album story they tell you about. Yeah, that was real, but it was uh, it was a gathering, somewhat opportunity, and again, it was something we do, and it kept me out of trouble. That was the other thing it did. Uh, see, now they don't even have talent shows for real for a kid, but we was trying to do, we were just trying to go somewhere and rap, you know, trying to go somewhere, be seen, be heard, and just to be doing something else different. And y'all, well, Birmingham always had a problem with starting in the Legang periods in the 90s with, you know, uh, people getting killed. And I like what y'all kids doing these days. Y'all got me done, kid. But I'm just talking about, they always had that. And again, we was able to do something different and stay away from it. So a lot of people had never left these uh, city limits or whatever. Just messing with the rap. If I never made a number, which is not true, but if I never made it where y'all don't, Recognize me to see me to know that just know that I'd have been everywhere from the pineapple to the big apple, from the palm tree to the palm tree, sitting up chasing, chasing that type of deal. And then it's just other things that we could do. Like I said, I was uh hosting, I put together the first uh award show, like legitimately that, that was around here. I mean, we were getting all kind of crazy because I mean, the thing just grew so fast, but at the time. The area wasn't ready. And so, like, with stuff like what Jamari is trying to do, by trying to open up these young people, letting them know, like, you can do some of this. Don't never let them out to you just because you're from here and ain't here. You may have to create it. You see what I'm saying? There's a huge gap between what we started and what they're doing now. But if they had to just, if we would have had a few come behind us to keep on pushing, keep on pushing. And ain't, ain't no telling how, uh, you know, this thing would have turned around. But young people, Hey, y'all can. We just, we didn't even have nobody like him when we was coming up. You know what I'm saying? We had them, but they weren't young like that. They they couldn't speak our language. They was by the time they were talking to us, we just really weren't paying attention. Like Pop, we not trying to hear that. You know. So give it up for this brother for actually, you know, doing. doing. And like I said, man, uh, we 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 just blessed to still be here because a lot of our partners not. I got a lot of brothers that I came up with because they didn't have something else going on or something they were chasing or something they believed in for whatever reason. You know, if it, if it wasn't sports or something, it didn't pay it out for them. You know, but I, I had no problem uh, doing what uh, we was doing. And again, that's why I'm here and I can be happy. Uh, hey, I'm touching on something Marcus brought up. He said that Great Like History you know, the radio. Um, and I know, in just case y'all don't know, his, their song I know is one of the biggest hip hop records. One of the closest things we got to a classic from his era. It is, as a matter of fact, it is that, and I don't know if y'all know about Jiggity Bang, that was the group ROA. Uh, RO they was blessed to, uh, you know, uh, get, a, get a little bit more spotlight as well. But again, we could have kept it going. They had the material, you know, we, we just didn't have the support. And, you know, again, for us to recognize it was okay to support each other, we didn't have enough of that either. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, I got conspiracy theory on, on that. What? Hold on. What's, what was your question? What was your question? You know what I'm saying? What was the process? First of all, they went into that song, and then when it became popular, it reached the heights that it did. Like, what were you guys' mindset as a group at the time? 
our first time doing that song, we we had just really formed, we, we formed this other company and then we had people come around us and we kind of formed a larger clique, right? So imagine like Wu Tang from Birmingham. As a matter of fact, that's what that's what, what some things kind of charge us at. But so we we worked on this song. If y'all remember it, yeah. Look, there used to be this thing called four track uh, record. So now you got everything on the computer, whatnot, before you had to go to the studio. Four track recorder was really a cassette tape that you could record four different tracks on no, and no more than that, right? It was like a real simple version. So we recorded the first version that I know on this real simple, you know, re recording device, or whatnot, right? We went to uh, a, a local music conference uh, and we met uh, a young lady who is still one of my mentors to this day, uh, her name is Tori Bailey. Tori Bailey uh, runs WZZA uh, radio station on Muscle Shows. Her father, uh, Carl Bailey, is, I want to say, probably, if not the first, but probably one of the first black owners of a radio station in, in, in America, period. Um, so the, his daughter was our mentor coming up, right? So we went to the music conference, played the song, but we performed the song and whatnot. We didn't know anything about the music conference. We just, we, we haven't been outside the, the city. I thought you were going to say Renee. 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 Tori was on her panel. Okay. So okay. Renee's okay. conference, but Tori was on her panel, right? So we did the song. The song was rough as all get out. Tori just happened to take a liking to us. Like, that's, that's why she is my mentor to this day. Um, and Tori basically wrapped our arms around us. Tori did. If you remember uh, all the them, them rap bands and, and all the promo teams going out with the signs and all that kind of stuff back in the day, if you think 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 no limit in their, in their promotion strategy, right? When they had people showing up in every city, Troy was kind of in charge of that for um, 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 the fans. Okay, right. So she would charge people to go do what she was doing for us. She gave, she told us what the fee was, and we was like, huh. Oh. And then she was like, but I do it for such such. We was like, oh. <laughs> And uh, and she saw the genuine look on her face. She was like, "Yeah, I like y'all. I'll I rock with that. I think the only money we ever paid to her was like for like the first half of a consultant fee for like maybe three months, and all the rest of it was love from her, right? So fast forward, um, the song was on four track. We get the song actually recorded because the response was good at the cop. Tori wrapped her arms around us and told us, "That's the one. If you're gonna do anything with that, I'm gonna do something with that." Right? We had a bunch of songs, that was the one. So we went and recorded that song. We went and did singles and whatnot. And then we kind of, we, we, I say we put it out in that we took it up to, to the radio station. And this is where my conspiracy comes in. We took it up to the radio station, 95.7 Jam. During this time, 95.7 just got to Birmingham. They, they, they were they not was. here. Matter of fact, I would, I would venture to say that when we did the conference, they weren't on the air. Right, um, right after and when when 107, which who is not here anymore, was the, was the main radio station. It was local radio station. The first the first people to ever play our song was when in the Wicked 808 countdown. Yeah. They were the first people to ever play it. Maybe a week or so later, 957 jumped on the air. This is why my conspiracy uh, comes in. We knew a couple of people at 957. Right, we had got burned from a, a, a previous station in a previous situation before. And so I'm being the, the quote unquote leader of the group. I'm like, look, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do it right this time. We're gonna go up there like we're supposed to go up there. We're gonna say what we gotta say, we're gonna have everything in hand that we need to have in hand, right? Um I knew Corey and we knew I had met B. Brian. Now Corey introduced us to B. Brian, right? Took the song up there. Um, matter of fact, no, I didn't take it up there. Black boy. Not a black boy. Black boy was a member of <laughs> That was his rap name, Black Boy. Black Boy was no longer with us. He passed away in 2004. But Black Boy was like, if you can imagine somebody who, who was always butting heads with everybody all the time, it's him, right? And so when I say, hey, we're going to do it this way, Black like me, do how I want to do it. And he did how he wanted to do it. And he ran up there to the station. Nobody knew he was there. <laughs> He ran up there to the station with the music and whatnot. Next thing I know, next thing I know, I'm getting a call from B. Brian and Corey saying, come up to the station. I'm like, man, what's this dude gonna need? He done talked to us in the, in the airplane, right? So I thought the conspiracy theory comes in, whereas 
957 is the first is is the first station of this kind. You remember during this era, this is when the the, the law change uh, and all the all the big stations on Radio One and Cumulus, all these big corporations started coming about, right? 957 was the first station of that kind here in this market, right? All the other stations were local stations, homegrown stations with homegrown DJs and whatnot. This was the first foray into what you hear now, the programming that you hear, right? 957 needed to tap into this community. We were perfect for that opportunity, right? Which happened, can, 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 which you happens see what I'm all the time, though, with everything. Right. It's, so it it's, was a matter of, yes, the song was good. I never say my song was not good. It was damn, it was, it was everything. It should have been a classic like it was, right? right. However, I'm, if I'm being realistic, it was also somebody else's opportunity that pushed us into that spot. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had that same year we was on um, the jam, the first jam fest they did. We performed with. With Outkast, Run DMC, Aaliyah, uh, uh, Crime Boss, a couple other folks and whatnot. And they played it up on the radio station leading up to this big, this first big concert, the first jams type of concert or whatnot in the city. They played it up because they started spinning that song a lot. And they made it seem, it was a joke, but they made it seem like we were the headliners and Aaliyah was open up for us. So does that make sense to you now? Which happens a lot. Right. You know, uh, Public Enemy used to do that when they would go on tour. Wherever they was in the market, whoever was stronger than the market, that's who headlined the show. But again, like you were saying, though, it was a matter of timing, opportunity, and they could have did more. Because like you said, we still have local DJs here now who still won't take the plunge. I tell everybody and thing, a lot of this music, I, I do a lot of music overseas. And you want to know why I do it overseas? Because of its quality to an audience that doesn't know no difference in the sound of this record and the sound of this record. You see what I'm saying? You want to go for that. You want to go for the choir and let it stand on its own. But what you'll learn and what discourages you is that that's not how things are. You see what I'm saying? But they could be. You know, they definitely could be. Uh, he talked about the Jam Fest. I seen when Jamari wanted to speak on festivals we used to have. Did anybody grow up here? Y'all all grew up here? None of y'all fellas didn't grow up. So y'all are not familiar with like city stages. The Heritage Festival and the whole deal like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to be 30, so I know. Okay. You can't well, tell me in no I, 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 I kind of know. My, my yeah. grandmother was, uh, she was in like 60. My mom, mom. Again, know. very much like them, though, with the radio station and the jam fest. Uh, quick question. The folks who said that they're not from here, though. Are y'all from the South? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Y'all from, from y'all from, from a, 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 a place where where festivals is common. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you you kind of you still get. Oh, look, look, where you from, bro? From the Smith Nation. Where you from? Savannah, Georgia. Look at Oh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, Huntsville right. back in the day was for the space center. You know, right. I remember. <laughs> I, 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 I remember when they made the transition. They was like, you know what? We're not gonna be a college town. We're gonna, you know, follow. We, we you know what no, but I'm saying, because I, I used to uh, perform comedy at the Green Room. Remember, you remember the Green Room? Okay. I, I performed at the Green Room up in Huntsville for like three years straight. Every Tuesday and Thursday. When I went down Wednesday, I go up to Nashville and do stand up comedy. You know, but again, well, that's that's different. Now. It's different exactly. From, it's different from what he's talking about. Completely, you know, completely you know, beautiful way. And then you from Montgomery, we used to call Monkey Town. We used to go down there to Monkey Town when they, they what was the first thing to have at the track? Um, down there, like, you know, we would go down there and then, of course, the classic. Uh, but we used to have a heritage festival here, though. And my group, you know, I've always uh, had a, a, an association with the artists or whatever, and they wanted to figure out how they could tap into the actual artist from his area again, just to bring people. They was gonna bring the big people, but it take a little bit more than that to actually have a gathering and make a gathering. And so, um, the Rhino Agency, um, I thought I'd never forget his name, um, the guy that was in charge of the Rhino Agency, uh, Larry. Larry, Larry, okay. This, 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 this was a trip, and of course, it don't exist no more, so I'm not spilling the beans on the way now. Me and my guys, did y'all you, you, did that before? Did y'all get paid? Yeah. Uh, I'm just uh, saying yes or no. Yeah, we got paid the first year, the second year, the third year, we didn't get paid, but 
we got paid less the second. We got paid least the first. We got paid less the second. Your third, they said, third year, they said they were going to pay us, but they didn't know that my wife was a graphic designer. Uh -huh. And so we duplicated all the VIP pay that we were handing out through the game. <laughs> <laughs> now, and, of, and we made our money because we sold enough to make our money. One of the reasons that some of the festivals just don't exist today because, again, they all didn't do it the right way. This is how I ended up uh, doing the uh, program that I did, how I did the award show. I always wanted the thing to have integrity. You know what I'm saying? Most uh, awards shows now, and I ain't gonna call that, bought and paid for, you pay some money, they live the gig, so we just didn't do that. But so we're doing this thing with the uh, Heritage Festival. I always got paid. I had some partners of mine. When they came, I was like, you didn't get paid. You know, because I'm like, they, they taking money in the gate, so we should, they didn't feel like they didn't have to pay the local people, even though the local people contributed to a ton of people coming there. You feel what I'm saying? And uh, like I said, again, but what they were, uh, one of the things that they were doing that why they, they're not in was not doing square business. I don't know if y'all got paid like this, but you went to the office to get, you know what I'm saying, the money. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they would write you the check and then you sign the well, check, the give it back. No, but well, they would sign the check and you give it back to them, they give you the money out the back. Did they do you like that? Maybe the second year. The first yeah. year, the first year we took the check off and blah, blah, blah. Second year, could, could, that stuff started happening. Cooking the books, that's what they ended up doing. Because if, if you told me you was gonna pay me 500 and that's what you did, and, and I and I signed up on a check, then you could easily write in your book that maybe you paid me 1500 Now that's that's a grand for yourself or whatever. But those right that led to why they're not handing one. City stage is the same thing. The city wanted it, uh, it was ran by some lawyers or something like that. They ain't got so comfortable with what they were doing. Uh, the city then would help them out. They had volunteers. They would make money, but they had six months to turn in what was spent. You see what I'm saying? And that, and that, that little gray the area. With the city, right? Yeah, that little gray area allowed it. Because first of all, if you got volunteers and the vendors are paying you, to, at that point, it's all still private. You know, you got to write down what you pay the people that you bring in. But then what about all the other people and thing, you know, but, you know, they, they, Again, that's why we don't have some of the major stuff that we have. No integrity. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, but this, this, we could, we could go all day about uh, this. Somebody asked a specific question because you know somebody, <laughs> if you're just curious about something, please. Get something across Alpha 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 Joy, y'all. Company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that, mm -hmm. right? Um, Firehouse is an average. They became the closest thing to the I Now, you're going to do That's what another post on the That's what I said. I said all that to say. When he was talking about the I Know Lounge, we talked about like as, a, as an artist of right. any kind, really. Right. As a right. local artist of any kind, be it a dancer, be it, be it poet, mm -hmm. and musician, whatever you want to call it. As a local artist, it's hard for people, even locally, to find the space for you to do the thing you wrote, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we wound up at a lot of the poetry set. Yeah. Even though we was rappers or whatnot, we went to the poetry set because they had a microphone and the audience or whatnot, you know, right? So, but it's, it's, rare, it's rare that you find a place that will welcome you as a local artist, who will treat you as a local artist, who will put you on the same building as, as whoever else they got on, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, that's right, but it's it's a it's a cup. It's we, a cup. We're gonna give you our brother before we do. Now I'm gonna say this: the high note did show us love, but like we said before, they actually needed us because they was on a that you know Sam had the best reputation with our, our the bands that come. Mm -hmm. So bands weren't coming there no more. So when the rappers started to come, that was new income, and we could bring a few people in there. And you know, sell a drink and do you he know saw what, opportunity. But he was they, cool too. Yeah, he was he was cool, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? The love yeah. came later. The love came like once he realized that we could do, he backed up. Like, you know what? You guys want it, you want to sing? Yeah, these guys want to fry. The poets come out there, they do it at night. Yeah. He was a little sorry when we moved to Dirty 30 though, and we went to Fair Park. I bet mean, it was yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. go ahead. He fellas tell us uh, your name, where you from, where you at. Uh, my age. Yeah. Uh, my name is Brandon Elkway. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama, and I'm 21 years old. I'm Jalen Davis. I'm from Montgomery, Alabama, and I'm 20 years old. Uh, hey, how y'all doing? My name is Kevin Allen. I'm 19 years old. 
Yeah, so that's what we want to do. So like I said, we got two guys, you know what I'm saying, grew up in like I said, the 80s, the 90s. You guys are in the present. And we're going to have the games come up a little bit out of this. You know what I'm saying? She's from Tisdale. She's going to talk a little bit about that growing up in her era. Um, so this is my question for you three. We're going to compare and contrast it. Like, I grew up, these guys grew up, a lot of us grew up in this area where there was no social media. So like now, it's like everything is about technology and everything. So first of all, let's go back to you guys in middle school, high school. What were you talking about black history? Do you feel like knowing about history matters to this current generation? So um, I can start. Uh, I'm from Owensville, like I said, and I went to a PD, PWI. So like they didn't really <coughs> teach you really anything that you didn't, they weren't forced to teach you about black history, if that makes sense. So we were taught like the basics basically and everything, but nothing more, nothing like um, about other like creators and all that, like African American and all that stuff. And as far as the importance of like Black History Month, I think it's extremely important because you need to know where you're coming from and like the people behind you, what they did for you to be there. Because like that'll make you appreciate kind of what you have now, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, come from, I come from, from my grandma. So, you know, like that city is very historical. But as far as um, I went to public schooling over there, it's kind of in a similar situation as Birmingham Public Schools, it's like as far as like the funding and the teachers, and you know, it's all about. The people that um, are there to, to teach people lesson, but you know what I'm saying? Because Black History, like like we had the discussion a few days ago about how you know whenever you get like a Black History project, it's more of the people that you're similar with, like MLK or Frederick Douglass, but it's people in the city of Birmingham and Montgomery and all in the state that have contributed. You know that we forgot or intend to forget. You know there's local contributors to that. So um, I believe it's important because. In this current generation, as we all know, like there's there's changes being made that they're trying to push to like erase that type of history, you know, and kind of make it more uniform rather than oh, this is from like their perspective, basically. So it's just I feel like it's very important because we tend to look at things differently when there's a different perspective. Like we may seem like oh, the Montgomery Bus boycott, but you may have not noticed that Rosa Parks, for example, wasn't the the first woman to actually like. The climate kind of seeking, you know, so stuff like that, you're not really going to know until you search for it. But nowadays, you know, two people ain't going to, many people ain't going to search for it. You, there's other people that's not willing to bring that resource out. So, yeah. And kind of picking up all of them, uh, I went to PWI all my life as well. And kind of black history, it was taught, but it was just a service level, like the basic, the Martin Luther King's, the Jackie Robinson's, just, you know, nothing too deep into it. But I'll say, not looking at it outside, looking in, I'll say that black history is very important. And it's something that just, you know, needs to be taught more, more in depth than what it is. You know, it's okay to learn about Martin Luther King, but some people who have such a bigger impact on our world that it isn't recognized. And it's kind of sad that their names are kind of like sadly forgotten throughout our history. But just because of the way the school systems are set up, those people, you know, are forgotten. And I think now, um, I think we should like all just push towards, you know, make sure those people's names are forgotten be remembered, you know what I'm saying? Because they had such a huge impact, you know, not only within the community, but also in the world and others, and they help encourage others as well to push the narrative. All right, so this conversation has been about music and media. Like, look at that picture behind Mark this week. Um, the Bible, like, Mark Mark's over there. Right, yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, like, they talk about, like, that picture right there was what helped us get attention on the movement. You know, like, so the media has so much power, photos and stuff like that have so much power. So we're in this age now with music. You know, so there's gonna be questions for all five of y'all. Like, going from y'all era to era, like, you know, stepping is like all about the hip hop, you know, the scroll, all of that. So how do you, so start with you, get going, step. Like, how does music like impact this courage of well, you know, yourself or just this whole current generation of music? So I would say music is honestly like everything for like the generation, especially because if you look at all the trends, the fashion that like how like everyone's dressing and talking and acting, they all look kind of correlates to like the rappers, the big rappers now. Like they kind of like imitate how they act. So I think that's like really everything in our generation when it comes to like just like our culture in general. So I think it's really important. Basically. Yeah, I believe that um, the culture like tied in with music is 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 like basically hand in hand because you know it's it's a mood like it enhances your mood. You know, like it, it is most likely like a gateway to display image. Like you know, back in the day, you know, we had the local artists here, but we also had people like 
Tupac spreading the message, like you know. And then nowadays, when you compare the two music, we still have those people that spread the message, but they're not giving their main attention as it, as they once were. So music is everything. Um, and I believe, like with social media and everything, like everything more visible, like you have more access to a whole lot more. But it's all about the narrative that's being pushed. And at the end of the day, like you can display your reason to do music, whether like you said, like stepping, strolling, stuff like that. Um, but it's also about like the intentions behind it as well, because your your yeah, it influence leaves a big impact. So. Uh, yeah, I agree with what both of them said. Uh, music is a uh, you know big impact on this culture and everything like that. Um, I'll say nowadays I feel like I'll say our generation kind of look more deep into the music, like how the beats and everything scheme like that. And I'm pretty sure they did that back in the old day and everything like that. But I feel like we're trying to you know kind of you know emulate that from y'all. You know, since you know trying to break down songs and the meanings to the lyrics and everything like that. Now, compare and contrast to what you see now the Birmingham music to what it was, which is music just period, when you two Stop for creativity. I mean, completely. Like, you guys, all, all, unfortunately, young people, you guys only introduced to one type of artist. And that one type of artist that you're introduced to, they have you thinking it, it's either this way or no way. Particularly with the female artists, with the guys or whatever, everybody now is exactly the same. Well, we from the same area and none of us was the same. We Back, back in the day, nobody wanted to be the same. We wanted to bring what you could bring creatively because everybody wanted to be creative. That's what it was all about. It was all about having something else to do, expressing yourself, having other people see you express yourself and you get popular from that. There's, you guys probably will never know who De La Soul is you might not never know who's a tribe. No, see, they may, I'm just saying, they may not never. But what I'm, what I'm saying about that is, but no, what, what I'm saying though, I'm just saying though, like that kind of variety, they don't, it's not an even playing field. Because if you listen to the local radio station, we got 995 something, it's all the same. If there was anything different ever played, it would stand out like a sore thumb. Go, wait a minute. Was that actually, you know, so again, back when we were doing it, everybody just wanted to be creative. Everybody wanted to bring something different to the table. You wanted to bring whatever your background was, but it's the same thing with dressing. Hey, I don't know how many young people even iron these days, man, but well, when I tell you, when I, when I, when I tell you, hey, when I tell you, man, Chris Jean, when I tell you about some Chris Jean, bro, that clean sneakers with a toothbrush on Saturday, bro, I'm talking about you know, I mean, again, it's just type of creativity. Um, a lot of times, like the people, you know, take to have like what they had social media wise now. And I would have loved to have a YouTube. In fact, the closest thing we got was MySpace. MySpace, you know, y'all probably remember that. Yeah, I wish we had. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> which is still a very big thing internationally. MySpace is still very big internationally, whatever. But like everything else, they just keep you going. By the time you learn how to use the tool. Give you another two. You know what I'm saying? And uh, with our culture, they just keep us on the roller coaster, unfortunately. So, you know, with the music, with the television, you know what I'm saying? With they, it, it, hey, I can go on. Go ahead, bro. So, I say for a long time, I had the same, like, same exact people, right? Yeah. Um, and I can't even depend for exactly when, but I, I will say that there was a realization I came to. I think I was looking at the mo the model, right, mm -hmm. of of how music is made and sold, which has changed. Yeah. Which has changed, right? Um, how we promote music has changed, right? Talking about earlier about uh, like when we got put on how this the the law changed to allow radio stations to 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 become a monopoly, right? All of these things have changed, which has changed how we how we get the music, right? Um, I'll say this. I think I think that there are a lot of current, new, younger, like create super super creative artists, right? Mm -hmm. I think that the model does not allow me to see that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I know for a fact, and this is why. So say for example, it's a couple of like young groups, crews, so on and so forth. 
some of them that I they, they may call me a mentor or, or OG or whatever you want to call it, but I also gain from them because I, I literally uh, one crew called the Kickback. Kickback be doing a lot of stuff. They came from Buddy's Radio and Student Media down here. They graduated, right? They graduated probably like 2017, 2018, something like that over there. So they mid mid 20s, late 20s, something like that. I I go to them and I ask them what y'all listen to, right? They know me well enough to know my taste. But they ain't gonna send me somebody that they, somebody that said they play that, but they know I ain't gonna rock with them, right? But if it's somebody that's that's on the line, that's that's that sounds has a new sound, fresh so and so forth, young, but they appeal to my sensibility, they're gonna send them my way, right? So for me, I say it's just it's harder. It's harder for me to go out and, and, and look for new artists. Not that they're not there. I won't say the damn thing, right? I say it's harder for me to find because. Before I had to get up and go and look and somebody would tell me an ad come out of whatever you want to call it, right? And I go to the store and there ain't but so many in that store. Right now, if I go to, I, I got a subscription, which is great because I got all kind of all kind of stuff. I'll be going down rabbit hole of all kind, right? But at the same time, it's hard to pinpoint. I can't go just find music. They're gonna put on the front page the title or, or whatever what they want me to see. You know what I'm saying? So like I can't get I can't get to the new stuff that's good without without yeah, going through a barrier. It's all common about like I said. Yeah. You can pay for it, you can put it there. You got a question, my guy? Yeah. I was gonna because he touched on it a little bit, but I was gonna ask like the my rebuttal to that would be like creativity in our generation, I don't feel like it's rewarded as much as it was in our generation. So like um it's it's I feel like it's a, a bunch of artists that have their own specific sound, their own mm-hmm. different type of ways they do things, but it's like the people that you see or the people that's pushed out is all sound one way or all they're doing one thing. So like what, what would y'all kind of advise me on how to move through that? Cause it's it would be because we do something crazy and we not nobody is, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna say search. It's like for real, like that too, that, yeah. that that for sure. But the only way to stand out is to stand out. You feel what I'm saying? The hard part is so so say for example when 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 me and him first started rapping what you want to call it, you probably kept him on the phone rapping. Right, seriously, rap. Everybody was rapping. Everybody was doing something now. And that, I'm not saying there's anything against that, but what I'm saying is the number has grown so much, it's hard to sift through. Yeah. Right. So because it's hard to sift through, the only thing that I can think of that's gonna make you stand out is to stand out. You just gotta be more creative about how you set yourself apart from some folks, right? And some people do that in the music that, that they create, but then some people do that on, on how they roll it out, right? Some people do that in, in say for example, I say interviews. If you know what I mean? It's a lot of a lot of avenues right now that were not available. You can jump on and get on an interview and, and make some rounds or whatnot. I did not like 21 Savage when he first came out. <laughs> I was not, I mean, I, I just, it just and it wasn't it was bad because the beat was ridiculous, but I just couldn't get into him, right? I listened to him on interviews and I gained the respect for him because I saw him grow. You know what I'm saying? He got me not through his music, but from somewhere else on that one, I still ain't gonna go out and just run by that, right? <laughs> no, I mean just just unless he's unless he's speaking on something that's specifically in my perspective, I go get it, right? But that's the, it's not about him at that point. It's about what your what your conversation is, right? And I I'll be willing to bet as I watch him grow, as he grows, at some point he gonna speak on something that that relates to me because he's grown. You know what I'm saying? But all all in all, it's just different. You gotta find different ways to set yourself apart. It's not necessarily just in the news now, now that it's all back. Again, it's, it's the imagery. I, I, me, this particular venue, I want to stick with what Jay wanted us to talk about, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. like, I even have an issue with the news. I'm like, seriously, like the news is like the music. It is the exact same news. So you can't tell me that there's nothing else going on mm-hmm. but what you're showing. The first five things they show, they show the weather, then they show the latest two killings, then they come back and tell you about the weather and the traffic. Then they show you about the world and them, kill, them killing and no problems. And I'm like, it, it, it seems like based on that, we can't get it together. That's not true. Based on the music, we can't get it together. Based on the television program, we cannot seem to get it together. And I tell people, you have to, when I say a search, meaning like when you see something of interest that look different and looks like you, you should actually was not take a look. You should sit up, open a book. Tell, when I do book fairs, I used to sit up and um, tell all the little fellas. Because the little girls, 
they know what the little guy, not so much. They had their mama and the money, they want to buy erasers and little robots and pencils and all that. I'm like, look, find a book with somebody that looks like you and give it a chance. You understand what I'm saying? Nobody else is going to tell you this. So I'm going to tell it because I got nothing to lose the game by telling you this. Other than opening you up to some, you have to deal with things that identify with you. A lot of what's being presented may not necessarily identify with you. And that's in music, news, sometimes in school. you in school and you're like, God, darling, I've been here for eight hours. They ain't said nothing. <laughs> nothing. Let me, let me throw something else out there. Let me get this to it, right? And we talked about it a little bit before. And it just hit me because I began to realize sometimes where I actually work my eight to five work. So when we think about how we how how things are presented to us, right? Be it the Spotify homepage, be it the news, whatever, whatever, be it what's going on in your timeline, right? I think it's really, really, really important to remember because I work my 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 day job right now is working at UAP. I'm in the admin department, I'm a web designer. But the division I'm in is basically the PR arm of UAB, right? So everything that y'all saw when you was in high school and whatnot, all the materials they were sending you and all the ads or whatever, that my department did of that, right? I want y'all to really, really think about how strategic these folks are as they put these things together to put in front of you, right? It's focus groups going on, right? It's focus groups going on and meetings going on and so on and so forth for them to decide how they want to approach sending you X, X, Y, Z, you know what I'm saying, come to UAB or, or whatever the case is. You know what I mean? The same thing that happened when it comes to, to the yeah, news. Exactly. He's talking about, if, and you gotta realize, if you if you recognize a pattern or whatnot, it's it's a really good chance that that, that, that may not be just the circumstance, right? Somebody studied that, somebody did some research, and somebody decided that this is the pattern that we need to follow for our success. That's why, you know, and that's why they said stupid stuff like this guy with some tennis shoes could be president because we like tennis shoes or whatever. Just ignorant. They don't look at that. Anymore. I'm going to turn some over to y'all brothers. But even take these brothers right here, 858, first, you know what I'm saying, the black Greeks and whatnot. But usually when you hear about fraternities and sorority, what do they always show? They show you the step. They have no idea about the community service that these groups and stuff do and what they're based in. And so that's what I'm telling people. I know right now y'all young. <laughs> You know, the, the, the stepping thing worked out. But let them know, though, the history of what these organizations, why they were founded. Every black organization, you know, that was founded for a reason, with a, you know, with a principle. But again, when somebody that's presented, they always want them to come by stepping. Hey, man, let us talk. Let us eat. So that's what I'm saying. You know, don't let the image be dictated by somebody else or whatever, man. We have got to be even starting young. You got to sit up and have a say. And how you look and what's being presented, uh, how your communities look, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so a after listening to all of this, uh, I discovered one thing. Now, in in the music industry, especially back in the day, because I'm close to fifth. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was born at a time where uh, you didn't have a lot of technology, and I grew up. Uh, I was like part of the generation where I was first introduced to all this technology and uh, music uh, was was no different. It, it wasn't uh, all of the music that was for the seventies, eighties. You know, they was great. You know, absolutely wonderful. Uh, most of them are, are which call uh, you know they was very lyrical. They, they told a story, but one of the things that made them popular was their image, their brand that really stood them out. Like take Slick Rick, for example. Uh, you know, a lot of his rhymes are poetic. You know, he, he dressed a certain way. He talked a certain way. You know, he stood out because he had something, he brought something different to the table. Uh, then you have Public Enemy, for example. Uh, they was uh, they was social. A lot of their songs uh, deal with social uh, conscience. They deal with a lot of you know issues related to African Americans. You know they stood out in, in that way. And, and then you have uh, people like uh, Eminem, you know, who's white. Okay, 
Um, he stood out. His branding was, you know, he wasn't trying to, you know, act like us. He had his own, you know, he had his own style. He based his experience on his own, his life with his family. And so he kind of stood out. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not necessarily the music that that stands out. It's the, the branding and the image that they're presenting. You know, to them, you know what I'm saying? Does and that make sense? And you know, and you know when our image and our branding was uh at its best is when we was in charge of it, right? Our Motown. Because Barry Gordon was like, You guys are gonna be sharp, you guys are gonna be smooth, you're gonna be choreographed, you're gonna have good records, you're gonna have records that can go anywhere around the world. When he was telling we, we don't make black music, we make good music, right? You understand? And then when money got involved, that's same thing hip hop. We started out actually making great music still make great music but once money got involved in things somebody else will always come and taint your image you know because of how they view us they view us like these are the guys that's expendable and a lot of times we don't come up knowing enough about our own culture to be like yo we we're not doing this so in other, in other words you have to so whatever image or branding uh, uh that you develop is very important that you uh protect that that branding, that image. And like you said, sometimes money gets in the way. You know, but for example, they say, well, if you uh if you do this, you'll make more money. But then you lose your branding, you lose your image, you lose your your identity, you lose who you you know are because people are attracted to what? Money you know, they're attracted to money. money. But then later you don't stand out, you know, because you're attracted to the money. So you gotta ask yourself which which one is is more important, the money or your image? Yeah. But so your image is gonna last; it's gonna have an imprint forever. But to me, money is just temporary. You can have it one day, the next moment you be out in the street. But your image, your branding, will stick with you forever. And it's very important that you protect. That image, and sometimes you have to decline some of this stuff, you know, because you don't want to lose your I, your self identity, and that's in the music world. That's that was very, very important. And when once you get, you know, sidetracked by all this money and and the monopolies and all that, you tend to lose yourself. And that is when they when they when you and I know you heard people say something about selling the soul. The word they leave, they leave out before that is metaphorically you sold your soul or whatever. And the physical soul selling or whatever and thing is when you sit up and you compromise something for something else and you just don't get in out of it. And at that point, you become lost. You got it, dog, man. I was just held and stay, stay fast or whatever. Because one thing about it, when you don't have something, you want it right away. As a culture, we got no patience. We didn't learn to wait. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else waited. We 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 was man. We be waiting on. We ain't waiting. You know, we ain't waiting for it to come around. We be waiting on somebody to come and give us something. So they didn't gave us something for so long. Whether it be opportunity for her uh, image. You know what I'm saying? You know, they they, they, they hate the dread, man. They hate the dread, you know. So so glad we can actually have a hairdo of our own. That's the first hairdo we'd had our own since the fade and the alpha. Them only, them only three hairdos we had that didn't dip, dip along us. The alpha we fade and these three. And you couldn't and you couldn't wear uh, neither one of them to work for a long time. Go ahead, Jay. All right, so <clears throat> I'm gonna close this out. Uh, we got a special guest, Miss Gaines. She grew up, like I said, here in Tittyville. Um, <laughs> and she's still here, apparently. You see what I'm saying? Roots. Need now, roots. I have uh, the 1976 class, graduating class of our, uh, our Lady of Fatima. Mm -hmm. Those were some of my best friends. Mm -hmm. But I grew up on Fairway South, right off of Holland Drive. First 19 years of my life was spent here in Tennessee. I remember this library before it looked like this. And Williams store that used to be right across the street. Um Silver Spoon, you remember Silver Spoon? Silver Spoon. Mm -hmm. You remember Silver Spoon? I remember Silver Spoon, <laughs> and I also remember Starbo. And I don't, I don't even know if Starbo was still there for me. 
when uh, you were there. I'm 65, I get ready to be 66. But we were just talking. Now, I went to Our Lady of Fatima um, Catholic Church. Um, my father was the first altar boy at Holy Family in Ensley. Um, and he's actually, his picture is actually in the, in their um, history book. Um, but we were just talking and he was asking me, he said, do you remember anything about uh, the things that were here when you were a child? I remember A&P grocery store, right? Um, Tideman uh, Drug Store and Mayfield Cleaners was right there in that little shopping place. And where and the thing that got me was he uh, he said, well, what about uh, some other things? He he was asking me about um, integration. And, so yeah, she went I John, went to John Carroll. Went to first grade. I went to Holy Family Elementary Elementary from kindergarten with Miss Hill, and that was kindergarten teacher all the way up until I don't know when. But she retired just prior to her death. And that was my kindergarten teacher. If I remember her and her name, she was amazing. And everybody in my in, in my family were school teachers. Um, uh, but all of my friends either went to Ramsey or Parker because I lived in uh, Tittlesville. My grandmother's house was right next to um, um, Mr. Armstrong, whose kids integrated Birmingham City Schools at Greymont Elementary. Um, I spent a lot of my time over there in Smithfield. So that's where my Parker friends came from, my Ramsey friends. And you didn't have to take a test to get, get in Ramsey at the time. That was a school you, you was on for or you went to. And um, and then uh, my grandparents lived in uh, Ensley. That's why I went to Holy Family, so I could walk walk to their house from school. I wouldn't have to worry about, you know, be hanging out on the corner or whatever. But we were just talking, and I was telling him, I remember when they had the, the uh, race right, and we were in school at Holy Family, and the kids from uh, Jackson Olin at the time, uh, or Western Olin at the time, came through. I mean, they were just, you know, of course, they were banging on doors and telling people, it's time to march, it's time to go, we got to do this, you know. So I mean, I we did, we were just talking. He said, "Boy, you know some stuff, you know," mm -hmm. and and that wasn't the only thing. My um my um my brother, who is deceased now, he went to Howard University. I wear his his jersey all the time. Um, and the other thing uh, during Black History Month, you always have a Black History Project and. Everybody does Martin Luther King and, and uh, you know, the, the usual people. But my own grandfather was, was a part of Black history. He was the first. He was, he was invited to be the first uh, chaplain of Tuskegee Institute. So, and he worked for 30 years. Um, it, it broken up in a different time frame. But he he worked for 30 years as a chaplain and other things at Tuskegee Institute. I know I'm light skinned, but we come in all shades, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and it's, it's because of whatever went on long time ago. My great my great grandfather, who was my grandmother's father was the man that I was talking about. And his name is John W. Whitaker, Reverend John W. Whitaker. And he uh, he was the one that was the first chaplain at Tuskegee Institute, now Tuskegee University. But my grandkids, instead of doing 
uh, a Black History Project on Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks. It was three of them go to Phillips Academy. All three of them did their Black History Project on John, um, Reverend John W. Whitaker. They had they had pictures of him with um, um, Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, and he's also buried on the campus along with my great grandmother. Uh, between their gravestones, and they're all on the campus. And we had our 19, uh, no, 2017 um, family reunion on the campus of Tuskegee University. It was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. And I'm I'm as proud as anybody to be a, 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 a 65 year old black woman. And I, like I said, we come in all shades, y'all. But um, I'm proud to stand with you, to work with you, to contribute to whatever I can as far as. And I do have a picture, like I said. I found when when you said you went to, went to our later family. I don't know if you know the people that I know, but um, some of your frat brothers, um, um, and I'm a Delta. I mean, it's Delta Sigma Theta, um, um, spring 1978. <laughs> and I, you know, um, I've been in the sorority for years and years and years. My aunt, um, only spent a couple of years in the sorority because she uh, passed away of uh, cancer. But I wouldn't have it any other way. And, you know, I'm all about public service, uh, community service. Um, and my grandkids will have the best education because I'm not going to allow them to run the streets. Mr. J had I, God God sent Mr. J to me because I inherited three of my grandkids who lost their mother in a car accident a couple of years ago, and they're at a basketball game at uh, at AG Gaston right now. This is why they're not here tonight. And and um, this is amazing. Y'all keep the conversation going. Don't let anything stop you from your goals and the things that you feel like you and your fraternities, sororities, and just wh whoever you are. And be proud of your heritage. Be proud of your family. Thank you. Uh, please, I don't know if I got a question. I'm going to ask Adidas the mom. There's another mom in the room. Um, <clears throat> what's like, you know, you know, me and you, you know, we doing this thing together with, with, with corn, you know. Um, what's like some of your big, like we talk about media and you look at the music and the stuff that you want. I'm just kidding. My boy. Yeah. Yeah. We don't just listen to like the music that they have out now. I don't listen to it. If I hear it, somebody's number has put me on and played it for me. I go back to, I say, 70s. My favorite decade is the 80s. I love 80s music. But I don't just listen to our music. I listen to all music because it speaks to me. So when y'all was talking about the music, baby, he, he listened to Bon Jovi. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and then we two kind of music and bands. It's the only kind of music that's good and bands. We, we listen to music. So the power went on mouth. He, he, I don't let, I don't like for him to listen to anything I'm going to somebody. I don't. Now, it's music that is played that is really not good. Like, it's not setting a good example. But I like it because it's catchy. That's the only thing that it'll, it'll be catchy. So it'll, it'll rub off on me. But I don't let him listen to stuff like that because it's too much violence is inflicting the wrong thing on them. Like you don't have to say the truth. You don't have to shoot at nobody. You don't have to you don't have to throw the gun or what well, you do 
for your safety, but like you don't have to do what the rappers are doing. You be different, be somebody else. You don't have to do what they're putting out there for y'all to do nowadays. Like, no, because Tupac ain't doing it. I mean, he may hit him up, but hey, it wasn't, it's not as bad as it is now. I feel like today's music is just awful. Oh, no, you the mother of It was, and that's my favorite. <laughs> Look, I saw your eyes like, I don't think you said it too. All, right, all I tell you, young man, stay different. Yeah, stay different. I'm telling you, bro, because again, everybody, as they grow up, they live. When you're a kid, you just don't know anything. You know what I'm saying? Everybody want to be in the middle. But, you know, the, like, the, when you, when, it's your age group, whoever the most popular kid is, and the now the popular kid. They may as well be best friends because everybody in the middle don't like them. When you're a kid, hey, if you're too tall, it's a problem. But if you grow up and you remain tall and play basketball, the whole school will love you. You know what I'm saying? You're either too fat. Maybe you wear glasses. Maybe you got, uh, you know, hey, if you're a girl, you got a deep voice. Well, trust me, by the time you get 21, that deep voice will be real good come 10 o'clock at night. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, whatever different as a kid, though, you just keep on the right. Some girls, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 you a young girl, you know, around develop early, get with that, because everybody else didn't develop like you. You know what I'm saying? If you're the smart kid, you may as well be friends with the kids and not so smart. Because everybody, and when you kid, everybody just want to fit in and be comfortable and don't want to be ridiculed. You know what I'm saying? But stay different. Trust me, it's better that way. It's better that way, bro. You'll be the one when you hey, act jail by personal experience being young and look at them right now. Some of the same people you went to school with, do they not speak different as an adult? Because now they, they grow. You know what I'm saying? Be like, man, I wish I was different. You see what I'm saying? A lot of them come up and tell can't can't see me and be like, bro, I wish I was different, man. Same cat when I was rapping, you'd be like, man, cut it out. Stop. The reason they wanted me to stop it. Well, stop telling the jokes with them because I was taking attention from what they was doing. Mm -hmm. But here it is, 20 years later, they are rappers now. I'm like, really? You, mm -hmm. you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, 45, he got three cities. We got time to make them at, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so he st that, stay different. Just know you heard that from somebody else. Stay different. You know. Oh, and so branding is oh, very. No, I was just going to add on basically because I went through basically the same thing, but mine wasn't. Different music, mine was blues music because my dad grew up listening like 50, 60, 70 blues music. Mm -hmm. He would get joked on when he was younger because my mama said that she thought he was older than he was. He used to ride around listening to real old music. Mm -hmm. So I got like the same type of stuff, not as bad, but I got the same type of stuff. And them same people who won't talk about you now with the same people be like, oh, your music takes five. Like when you get 16, 17, you, you, got, you, 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 got, you got the whole different level of music. I ain't even said this to same people to be like, Bigging you up there. Must they catch up you in fact. So again, you know, stay different, bro. You know, whatever your passion is, stick with that, man. You know. I remember they used to try to, well, they like the people would try to jank, but I was always good with the jokes. But I remember being in high school, uh what rocking the Batman t-shirts and all that. Hey, it didn't might might got some crack from my uh, back, but it didn't ever get too loud, bro. Like, hey, we can open this thing up, cuz we can open this thing up. Right, but I'm going to close up uh, with a question to the Alex the first. I'm going to give flowers to this young lady here. All the articles that you see that was written uh, for a different thing, mm -hmm. stuff that, stuff in, like, a lot of the violence, the gun violence articles, this young lady here, she wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to give if you want to say, like, so a few words, of, you know. Absolutely. Well, my name's Elena. I'm a reporter at AO.com. I'm originally from Dallas, Texas, and I grew up going to schools where, you know, people didn't really look like me, went to PWI, and I didn't have opportunities to sit down with people like this ever. And coming to Birmingham, now I have that opportunity, and I really appreciate it, and I appreciate being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So when we talk about support from media and so on and so forth, it's hard. So thank you for being here. Thank you for, for partnering with Jamar to, to add what you're doing to, to, to the platform that you're on because everybody doesn't have to do that. Absolutely. I'm thinking it's just you. Uh, do you know, you know Bashan? Who? Bashan? Bashan. Yeah. 
<clears throat> she's another writer. I, I think she used to write for the uh, AL.com. She, like y'all, two young black women are the only two young black women that I know who work for major outlets that will give us or anything like this a platform. So thank you. Oh yeah, I remember writing for the uh, Birmingham Weekly and the Black and White. And my whole reason for joining, I'm talking about no journalism background whatsoever, but my whole reason for getting is so that there would be a black voice in the room. And no matter what I'm turned in, they wouldn't print it. And I mean, they, they, they apologize, they put it in the archives, but they wouldn't print it. They would print things and I'd be like, well, you know what? Uh, you know, they, they opening up a new uh, community center on this side of town. They would read it. It would be, you know, uh, grammatically correct and everything. No reason for it not to at least get on a back page somewhere. And they would be like, don't you just want to review the, uh, the CDs and, you know, and do the prize giveaway? That's, 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 that. that's what I got relegated to, though. You know what I'm saying? But you know Glenn and Brock, right? Mm -hmm. The Glenn and Brock so credit. Said, I know oh, the Glenn and Brock credit. Glenn and Brock is always like, keep writing your articles. Keep writing your articles. And doing that. But they, they printed very few. But my whole focus was even going there. Would this would be a black voice in the room? All right, to my five alphas in the room. Um, my question to you is: um, As you graduate college, you know, uh, what's the impact that you want to leave on the world? What's people? First of all, what do you want people to know about the terms? Like, does everybody think like I told y'all the other day? Like, people think about the party the next day. Like, that's why they want to join, right? So, like, it's, it's a two-part question. Like, how do you want to change the image of your fraternity or the fraternity period? And then two. Individually, what impact do you want to leave on the world? Uh, so, like, it's like you said before, uh, most people think that the term is like all about stepping and struggling and, and like just getting our attention. But realistically, it's more, it's more than that. It's like about service. Also, the main thing I got from it is connections. You're never going to meet you certain people and able to meet um, people around in your area, in the community, in the, work, in the world. So, okay, that, that go a long way. <laughs> Not a future job to help improve the community, also influence others around the community, so they can get that job as well. So, what I heard, what I heard, I heard when I, when I was growing up was great mentors, main mentors as well. So you know, my father was my mentor. So being able to be in this position for Alpha, it's just like yeah, man, man, father, man. Yeah. 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 Uh, for me personally, I feel like people say this all the time that. Uh, the community service part of being our organization is the real work of it, and I agree with that because everything else that we do, as far as the party and the stuff, that's like maybe 10 15 percent. Oh, that's like real quick, you know. You, but that's what we post the most, that's what people are kind of seeing the most, so that's probably what they contribute to our fraternity more and sorority more. So, I would say, like, um, putting this community service and what we do out in the light more and showing people that this is what this is what we do more than we party, we, we can do community service more than we do party, more than we step, more than we stroll. So that's what, if you want to join an organization and you want to be a part of something like this, this is what you should be expecting. And that's what, that's what we're expecting of you if you want to join our organization. And as far as um, leading others, I think just leading my life in a way that others would be proud to kind of look at mine and kind of make an example of, like I uh, lead my life, my, the people I want to impact the most in my life are my two little brothers. Cause they, the people I have the most impact on is right now that they see what I'm doing, they look up at me, they kind of watch how I move and like, you know, Things that I do, so I uh, I just try to live my life in a way that they would be proud of me, that people would kind of do mine and everything. Yeah. Um, uh, I would say for me, first of all, like the uh, kind of the message I want to give to the world basically for being a fraternity is basically being able to show people that like some of us like you can put something out that's like positive in the world. I feel like there's so much negativity in the world, especially with people who look like when it comes to like things in my my like skin tone and everything. Not that like the news or whatever like puts out, it's just negative. So I feel like if you're part of something that's like big, bigger than you right. and positive, I thought like that goes a long way for like young kids like that to show that like you can actually do something good. You're not always gonna be the person to be in the last place or doing the wrong thing or like doing something illegal, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, I say with returns, um, I well, when I came in, like the college, I didn't have a like a Handed out a blueprint. Like I was first in, like my folks did. Like get to the point where I'm at now is farther than my parents was already in, like was. So just um I had to learn with the turn is about about putting yourself out there, being open minded as well. That's why I learned in college. Like 
fraternities, yeah, you see the usual things like stepping and struggling, but like you said, like service goes a long way. To me, I feel more, I feel like I put leave more of an impact on service than the whole part in the step and struggle. You know, even if you can do all that, like it's, at the end of the day, it's only a certain time period and you know, it's on to the next generation after. So with um that's what that like fraternities is bigger than what it may be portrayed to be, but it's all about what you contribute to it, what you like your reason for doing it, you know, what is, you know, um, genuine not is all up to the person that's, you know, put their name on that paper. So um, as far as the impact I want to leave to this world, I just want to be a open, like, resource of access to be like, okay, I have, there's some people in this world that haven't seen what, like, look, for example, what a black doctor may look like or what a um, black entrepreneur may be, but once they have access or at least see that with their own two eyes, like, okay, this is somebody that looks like me that could be in those spaces. It gives them more hope to come out of their environment because with me coming from a government, like, had I had the resources here, I feel like as if, you know, I could have changed a lot more and Montgomery developed a lot more in Montgomery. But sometimes some people, you know, they have to take their own route and, like, new scenery. But others, while they have the opportunity here with these resources, you know, they can push themselves out. You know, not not everybody has to leave their hometown, you know. So um, basically just keep on going, um, stay true to yourself because in the day you may be a late bloomer and people catch up. I'll say definitely the service is the biggest part. Uh, one of the best things I enjoy is being an attorney. Like we've been saying, the uh, struggle and the parties and all that stuff, all that stuff is just a snapshot, you know, so just a small period of time. And most people, they don't even remember those things, you know, being at parties and stuff like that. But the certain stuff, stuff that's uh, a lot of last stuff that creates legacy like, stuff that's gone, uh, not only create an impact on yourself, but the community around you and the people also involved. So that's definitely one of the biggest things that I'm glad I'm happy to contribute. And I hopefully I'll be able to do this for a long time. And I'll say one thing I want to do uh, with my time being out, but I'll say I want to be a voice for those who aren't heard. You know, there's a lot of us who go on her. A lot of us that are quiet, a lot of us that don't have the attention that such our peers in a way, social media and everything like that is, you know, if you're not the person with the most amount of followers, people don't may not care about you. But the thing is you can do it though. You know, those type of things, you know, out of followers, nobody really knows you for real. But you don't need a small group in order to get to where you want to be, but it's all about who you surround yourself with. And as long as you have the like minded goals and you have the discipline and you have the motivation, you have the support system, you're getting where you want. So I want to be able to help those, both, uh, you know, man and woman, they would reach that point in their lives. Of course, not even of course, make better comment. Uh, um, so I'm not a great fraternity. I'm in a fraternity, uh, Prince Ahmed. Um, there's a, a guy who I most recently has started looking up because I'm, 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 I'm real big in the history, especially of my fraternity, so, so to speak. And I'm starting to look this guy up and realize I got a short book on order. Charles Wesley. Y'all familiar with Charles Wesley? Okay. He was also a Prince of Man. So he wrote a history of, of the Sonic Order that I'm reading, but he also wrote Jaws history. Right? What I think is super interesting, because he, he was not only a Mason of the Alpha, but I think he was a help in something. He, like he was real big in the fraternal life. And and fraternities around that time, during that time period in America, wasn't that? A lot of people latched on to it. Um, but some of the things that he wrote about in terms of the brotherhood and in terms of a lot of things that y'all, all, all five of y'all have already expressed or whatnot, I just want to encourage you to continue to do that. Because what I thought was real cool was we were talking about, you, you know, you always see the alpha step and so on and so forth. I ain't seen y'all bust the steps since y'all went. <laughs> my point is y'all came here for this. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm letting you know that I'm appreciative because you came here for a conversation, right? Something didn't have anything to do with the stereotypical uh, uh, return to life, so to speak. You know what I mean? So, but without you even speaking, if your legacy is already in that head, so. Uh, so that's my cousin. My question is, and, I, and I'll turn it back over. Real quick question, man. When did y'all change y'all steps? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I asked a lot of my old, my old fathers who were albums and whatnot. So that, you get, but y'all know the culture change, right? Yeah, we, <laughs> okay. We, 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 no, no. But see, like, 
Nobody talks about that. That's a question. Yeah. Like, it's been burning me for I don't know how long, because all of a sudden I just saw whistles in the yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Maybe. That's a side question, though, man. But, like, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's hilarious. Like, I kind of feel like it's like music. Like, yeah. Where it's like, it's good to see how uh, top past members of different fraternities and sororities, like, the way they <laughs> step, the way yeah. they stroke and stuff. It was a lot more bigger than strolling. Now, yeah. strolling is more. Well, you, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So, like, y'all, y'all had a lot more creativity. You know the lyrics, you know the beat. That was everything, y'all. Now for us, it's like, it's who can I call y'all for the style how I present it? You know better than anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But y'all don't let nobody know. Y'all listen, <laughs> y'all listen on email now. It was the coldest. <laughs> like we feel, we feel switch the thing. No, we went out there, but no, I, I just like that. Come on, man. Tell me your name, your age, your grade. My name is Cordelia. I'm in the same grade, and I'm twelve years old. Okay. Tell them what you want to do. I'm doing YouTube when I grow up. Okay. And what you plan to do with that? Make money with probably other kids. Okay. And what, what did you tell me the other day? You know? You said you wanted to make property. You can't get a penthouse and all that. Rent out. You don't want to do stuff the other day. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you want to do. All right. What, what kinds did you say you want? You gave me two of them. UCLA or U UAB. Okay. What'd you say you want to major? <laughs> What'd you say you want to major? What do you want to love design? There we go. Six race. All right, thank you. <laughs> Tell me what, what sports you play. I play soccer. Okay, who choose your idols? <laughs> Who's your idols? Who who you look up to? Messi. Okay, for sure. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, I thank all of you guys for coming today, man, and being a part of this. It's something that we want to grow. Um, I thank my, my parents, man, for all y'all support, man, what I'm trying to do. You know, I know this room could be way bigger because I got way more kids than this. Um, and one thing, like I said, I talked to you about this, I talked to you about this, I talked to all my parents about this. You know, a lot of my kids ain't got fathers. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, Kane, who just who left here early, like, he, he got a strong support system. Like, he got stepdad, dad. dad. Oh, uh, so like I always try to teach Kane like what you have first, what they have is two different things. I told y'all brothers that the other day because I'm going inside these schools, I'm seeing 100 kids a week, and look at this, I can't even get them to bring their kids stuff. Like if, now when it's the spring break stuff, the whole library is filled up. <laughs> we have the greatest time in the world, but when it comes down to education, that's stuff I've been trying to change for 12 years. Like I told these young brothers the other day when I talked to them, when we go inside Birmingham City Schools and Cadiz, you know, you want to work on, so you know. We see a lot of white people, man, who invest in their time and they love. We don't see a lot of people that look like us. Who... Yeah, because we had uh, people at the church behind me coming out to the Dream Center every morning, every, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday morning, bringing right? donuts, having meetings with the kids and everybody. Never was really anybody that looked like us coming out to the school doing it. Yeah, you know, not by that jam, like, come for a pit for mm -hmm. But to inspire us and, you know, help us out, you know. No, nah, I will say that. Uh, I have. I remember going back to my old high school one time, and I couldn't figure out why they wouldn't let me and what I had going on bring that to the school, bring that to the children, like have a concert, have a concert on their behalf. Like, whatever we take up, we just go give back to the school. Because when I was in high school, we put on a concert there, and we bought a brand new PA system that they used for the year I graduated. We made that happen. And with the money they left over, they put another computer in the computer lab that we paid for. Now, those type of things can't happen. It's just sometimes they won't allow it. They used to tick me off like, wait a minute, I went here. I graduated here. I want to do that. But they were like, I remember they let Ruben come down one time. Yeah, ain't going to do it, Jackson. No. So, <laughs> again, sometimes it's not that the people don't want to come. You're not actually welcome to come in and contribute to our own. You know what I'm Because, see, that's why I don't mind, but I don't mind going through the people they do let in. I go through Jay sometimes. Yeah. So, you know, he'd be like, yo, we're taking up snacks. We're doing that. Okay. Well, I can still contribute through that. It's yeah. a lot of politics at that front, though. You know, you know what I'm saying? saying? But I just be Wrong. wondering, I'm like, sometimes when you don't sit, hey, they let them in because they come down with gifts. They've been raised that way. You know what I'm saying? I can bring the same donuts, but I still got to go through the, you know, the detector. You got a kid to go here. I'm like, wait a minute. Can I not just come and give it to the young people? You know, I'm a part of the community. 
So I'm just saying, it, it do be some of us that, that will go, but we just get checked at the door like that. They don't check the church at the house. I will also say that there, there are some people and they do get checked at the door, but it's unfortunate, but there are more people like Jamar who are in the school system to try to do things or whatnot, but as you can see, he's one person, right? So imagine those resources being spread thin. You may not be seeing them just yet, but hopefully, hopefully you'll get to see some someday. Before, before we got, we can get over here on uh, August of 2022. And yeah, the day before my birthday is when I moved in my apartment. And um, he was, Quandarius was what, fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So I had so many problems. His brother had died um, in a car accident back in um, 2020. All of us, we were, I, I was paralyzed, couldn't walk, had to learn to walk again. He had to go with my mom. DHR was involved because my baby daddy called DHR on me before we had to read. So I got a lot on my plate. I never really had no one to back me when it came to him. Like, I would go to the school, and I'm like, look, I'm having these problems. All y'all are complaining about is his behavior. I go and get him put on medication, get him talking to the psychiatrist, get him seeing people. I'm still not getting anywhere with you all at this school and to this day I'm still not getting anywhere with the school but because of him I just be like I have some type of faith because he has someone that's also wanting the same thing that I want for him because he gets bullied a lot. I can they all they ever call me about is him being in trouble. If he took his medicine for him to, you know, because he has a card on his back. He's ADHD, he's ODD, so he's defiant and he's very hyperactive, his attention span is short. So they're automatically gonna call me once he do something wrong. They're gonna wanna suspend him once he do something wrong. And I don't, I, I mean, I just can't do nothing but be like, okay. What's the movie again? He go right here to watch this. Watch that. What are you doing? Yeah. This is right. You like, do you do, I know you said you want to be a YouTuber, right? I know you said you want to be a web do, do you like doing anything dealing with the arts at all? Do you have any kind of arts curriculum in your school? Anything you'd like to do? They do arts come to you. He, um, he's in some, what is it that you're in? Y'all did a movie. Film club? So yeah, he's in film club. Okay. So that's about the only thing that he, he doesn't like basketball. He doesn't like football. Okay, I, ain't about, like I, ain't about, I ain't talking about none of the regular stuff with that, but you said film club? Um, y'all made a film recently? I'm gonna go back and look at this footage. I uh, think when, when the lady called me, she told me it was it was messed up, but it wasn't the kids' fault, right? It was the school's fault, right? Okay, so, did you go to did they show any parts of your movie recently? They did, but we I didn't get to go and see it because I think what you had, did you yeah. have what did you have to do? You had something to do with that page. Oh, but it was like an after, was it like an absolute thing? Yeah, it was I know what you're talking about. I filmed it. I was there for that. Okay. I, and I know, and I said I didn't say it. Just, I know, I think I know the program you were talking about. So all that being said, like stuff, stuff like what you just did, latch on to that and stay involved with it. Stuff, stuff that you're working on with Jamal, latch on to that and stay involved with it, right? It's, like, it's opportunity that, that they're giving you, but it's also people that you apparently have trusted um, to look out for your well-being, right? Um, and just grow and grow from that. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically what I'm that's what like I, I ain't think about what they offer at the school because that's most most of the things that I can think of that have been helpful for students. I call it alternative education. I, I work with a group of real life poets, I work with a group called the Players right now, uh, Demario, all of these, all three of these groups, and, and including some others that I, I can't think of the names of right now. All of them provide some form of education outside of that regular eight to three, whatever you want to call it, right? Mm -hmm. And because because they're because they're allowed in the school, they have to fit certain criteria with that Jamar know this. Right. They got but they've jumped, they've already jumped through those hoops so that people like myself, Super King, and other people can become teaching artists. If we're if we're not doing the paperwork like him to be a part of that, then we can be a teaching artist and go in through a program like that. You know what I mean? And those programs, our school programs, some of them are during school. I think the film that he did mm -hmm. during school is Ms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I know because she loud as all get out of here. She be talking out <laughs> like this. I, I know exactly who you're talking about. I know exactly who you're talking about. But like stuff like that, stay involved with stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? As, as, as much as possible. And I know for a fact that, that along with Martin, 
there, there are some other programs that are coming around. I, I hate to say it, unfortunately, they're hard to find, um, but they, they exist in there. And he's a great plug to, to anything related to arts. I'm, I'm glad that I did him because I tell myself how to find like. Uh, but a lot of things that he has now, I didn't have. Like a mom to actually help want to actually do something and be active with me, my mama didn't do that. So for me to actually allow you to go out and be your own person and do what you'd like to do, I didn't have that. I didn't have nobody to encourage me to want to, to be different and be me. It was always, she was at work and she didn't spend time with me and stuff like that. So I didn't have what he had. Yeah. And I try to stress that to him enough. Like you got a lot and you have a lot of people that care about you. He may he thinks some of his teachers don't like him because he doesn't like the way they treat him. I'm like, these people care about you. Just because you don't like the way they go about doing it, mm-hmm. they really care about you. If they genuinely care about it, even if you don't see it right now, you will if they genuinely care. Once they get over there, oh man, I, I know they You know what I mean? So he used to have he used to have a white teacher. So he tried to he take advantage of it because they bathed him. He's not used to the black teachers not allowing him like having his way and being able to get up and walk out of class when he wants to. Like he's used to being able to do that because they'll give him a oh, you can go get a break in the time out see the black teachers, they're not playing yeah, this. You, you can't do that. You gonna have to sit here in class and deal with it. All right, guys. Everybody, uh, the real super king. <laughs> All one word. On everything. If you just Google the real super king, y'all have that on social media. I know you, but just like it's T A D R A M S U B E R K I N G. Instagram, Facebook. Oh, Google all right, I hope y'all enjoyed the uh, Black History presentation here. Thank you so much for tuning in. Y'all have a great day.